So I am back from vacation. I actually had to come back from vacation early, um, which doesn't surprise me. Um, you know, my, my family motto is if you don't have bad luck, you don't have any luck at all. And that continues to be true. Uh, and of course, no, you guys know me, so you can guess what I forgot first episode back. That would be this thing right here. Uh, so <laughs> I had come back for the, uh, FA trophy fifth round. So we'll just show you guys highlights from that right away. Uh, after the intro, uh, then we'll kind of get you caught up on what's been going on in other matches. So roll the intro, highlights right out of the break, and uh, then we'll get into uh, today's match, uh, which will be against Harley Pool. So we were playing Bath City in this one, and, you know, needing a win, mid-table team. Uh, let's pick up that match speed just a little bit. Uh, it's Nuevo over the top. Good first touch by Williams, and he slots home his first goal in the fourth minute. Williams would take a penalty in the 20th minute, giving him a brace and making it Tiverton Town 2, Bath City nil, And then Ellis. A good through ball once again. Ellis has been a great player for us. A little chip over the keeper, Swallows, who went down, made himself big. A good attempt by the keeper. 14 to 8 on shots, 5 to 1 on target, and Williams with a hat trick and a 9.3 match rating. Let's go back to where uh, last episode left off, which was the 3 1 defeat to Hull. So we had a 2-1 win over Forest Green. Graham Williams with a brace there. Warrington in the FA fourth round, a 1-1 draw. Williams with the only goal, and that was in the first minute. Actually, it was about 19 seconds in. It was the fastest goal in club history. We had the replay, went to extra time at 1-1, and then Eden Allard and Matt McDonald both scored in stoppage time to give us the 3-1 victory there. Cheltenham, a 1-1 draw. Chorley beat us 1-0 away, and that ended a winning streak that went all the way back to November 20th against Torquay at home. So we've been on a really good run, not dropping a lot of points, a couple of draws here and there, but the first loss uh, in quite some time. And then we've rolled off uh, four in a row, 2-1, uh, two and 2-1. One, 2-1 over Maidenhead, 1-0 over Morecambe, uh, another clean sheet, 2-0 over Gloucester, Tony Doyle scoring the brace there, Oxford City 4-1, Graham Williams with a hat trick, Eden Allard with a set-piece goal, and then you just saw Graham Williams with his second hat trick in a row. So he's been very busy. Taking a look at the competitions, we were supposed to reach the second round. Of course, we are in the quarterfinals now, so that's good news. Pick, just picking up little chunks of money. Uh, we were supposed to get to the first round of the FA Cup. We made it to the third round, beaten, but that was that loss to Hull City. And in the league, we are currently 31 matches in. We are 16 points clear. We've reestablished that big lead. Uh, you know, the last couple of episodes, we've been talking about that. Uh, that we were up to around 11 points or more, and then it shrunk down to as little as five, really just a handful of matches ago. Uh, but Gloucester had been up in that second position. Now it's Forrest Green. A uh, lot, of, lot of maneuvering around in the playoff spots, but we've opened up that 16-point gap for automatic promotion. Uh, so I'm liking that. Jumping into the league... Uh, there's our goal scoring leaders, Graham Williams, with 39 goals in 31 starts, 28.65 XG. Great season for him. And don't forget, he missed a huge chunk, like five weeks. Uh, 27 goals in 33 for Mudge with a 20.7 XG. And again, he also missed a big chunk of time. Uh, he's just recently come back into the side three or four matches ago, I think. Uh, Tony Doyle in reserve off the bench for both of those guys. Now 10 goals in 14 starts, but 10 out of an 8 XG, so overperforming again. 
And then you can see we've got a whole slew of people that are contributing goals uh, here and there. Assist leaders, 15 from Carmichael out on the right wing, 10 from Mudge up top, 10 from Izquierdo on the right back position, Graham Williams with eight, Ireland on the left wing with seven. Again, he's only started 30 games, uh, but, you know, total, total. And uh, Ellis, now who's uh, Nuevo? Nuevo, four goals, six assists out of that number 10 slot. Uh, so, you know, more of the central mid, but he does move up into the number 10 when we need him. Uh, so that gets you guys caught up there. Uh, we do have our next match against Hartlepool in two days. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go on vacation for that two days while we kind of chat a little bit. So you guys know I was out of town on vacation and my my wife's mother, my mother-in-law, uh, fell and broke her ankle uh, before we left on vacation. So that was a little over a, about a week and a half ago. So. We already had to cancel our vacation, which was today and tomorrow uh, and Sunday, because we were supposed to come back Sunday now, uh, which was I'm recording this Monday morning. Uh, I'm still on vacation. I had the vacation days allocated, but we needed to come home. So my wife can now travel out of state again to go be with her mom for surgery. Uh, broken ankle. They're going to have to put some pins and stuff in it. So. Uh, I think the surgery is tomorrow or Wednesday. I don't remember, but she's going at, she's leaving this morning when she wakes up. So I uh, figured I'd get a little recording in before she woke up. And then uh, my granddaughter, she's, uh, she's one. She'll be two next month, the end of August. But uh, she got sick and uh, it's something called RVS. It's a respiratory virus syndrome. Uh, very similar, I think, to pneumonia. I don't know if this is playing out in outside of the United States because uh, you know I just don't know. Uh, but just more of a public service announcement for for you guys. Uh, this RVS it, it affects young kids, you know, kids and young kids, and then elderly people. So if you have grandparents, 60s, 70s, you know, 70s and 80s or older, and then younger kids, teen, you know preteen and then you know all the way down to newborn they appear at least here in the united states to be the ones most affected by this rvs and it's up significantly uh they have rvs every year uh just like the flu and everything else but with covid and then now covid we're kind of coming out of that hopefully but you know people have been pinned in for so long that you know, your immune system gets stronger by actually facing germs and, you know, bugs, you know. Uh, so when you're when you're locked up, when you're when you're pinned up and you aren't exposed to other people, uh, then, you know, your immune system can get weakened. Uh, you know, it stays strong by action by continually fighting. Uh, so now these these elderly and children whose immune systems are already not the strongest, they're predisposed to get this RVS. And it's very similar to COVID in uh, loss of appetite, uh, fatigue, dehydration. Uh, so, you know, make sure, you know, and it, so it's similar symptoms, uh, you know, to, to uh, you know, just a regular illness. But uh, so she was hospitalized Thursday night, or they brought her to the, to the emergency room Thursday. Uh, sent her back to the emergency room Friday and then admitted her Saturday morning about 1.30. So, you know, of course, we're, you know, not sleeping because we're, you know, waiting on word from my daughter and you know, on, on our granddaughter, how she's doing. And, you know, when they put her in the, into the, when they actually put her into the hospital and put her into a bed uh, in the hospital, uh, my daughter said, can you guys come home? And of course, as parents, you know, we immediately drop everything and, and go home. So um, long weekend because I've been sleeping a lot. Uh, luckily, she got out. Um, she got out Saturday night. Uh, so we got home. We got home about seven o'clock Sunday. And, uh, and she she got home uh, Saturday evening, uh, but still not drinking a lot. So we're having to kind of force force water on her. 
uh, and, uh, you know, stuff like that. But anyway, enough of my personal business. I just kind of wanted to get you guys caught up. And uh, now we will get into the Hartley Pool match. All right, we're going to go with Humphreys in goal, the back four of Hugel, Hemmings, Tierney, and Taylor, Bliss, and then McDonald in the mid. Uh, McDonald is typically our, our reserve striker, but uh, taking a look at uh, Nuevo, he's not at full fitness, uh, nor is Macaulay Ellis, so we're going to give them a little bit of a rest in this one. Ireland and Scoby on the wings, Mudge and Williams up top. Sorry for the long ramble there, uh, but before the match, just uh, again, you know, been away a week, so this is my first episode back recording. So just kind of wanted to get you guys caught up. And let's do our traditional encourage. Bliss with the corner. Oh, what a save by the keeper. Oh, my goodness. We had a couple of chances there. Gra uh, Pockington had a big save. And we just could not get a foot on the ball. And there's the header by Tierney, his third of the season. And all his goals, just like Eden Allard, coming off of corners. But that is uh, a big part of our game, right? So 1-0 to Tiverton inside the 10-minute mark. And Matt McDonald getting that start is injured. A potential groin injury. So he'll probably be out for a while. Problem is, I don't particularly have anybody that can play there. I'm going to bring Carmichael in for him. That's uh, out of position. That could be something we'll be having to keep an eye on. But, you know, sometimes with injuries, you do what you have to do. All right, there is a set piece. Mazzara. Mazzari, oh, and he goes top bin for his 10th goal of the season. That was a beautiful free kick. Not much we could do there. Humphreys went for it. Just bends it around the wall. I mean, that's Premier League worthy right there, isn't it? All right, let's, uh, let's demand more. Graham Williams gets on the end of that kick and slots it home with the volley. Number 40 on the season. That should be a bonus for him. He already got one bonus for, it was either 30 or 35. I don't remember. But he already got one bonus. So he's uh, racking up the goals again. Uh, definitely on sides. Now, Ireland and Mudge were off sides. So Mudge did a good job backing off on that one. And that puts us up Tiverton 2, Hartley Pool 1. This throws from deep in our corner. And the ball out is not good. Scobie's on this one. Good ball to Williams. Can he get to it? He does. He fights through it, but it's, he then loses it. Tierney's up to get it. We're going to rebuild Mudge over the top. And he's got a little half volley, and that's number 28 for him. Hemmings with the assist, and it's now Tiverton Town 3, Hartley Pool 1. And the boys are still playing really good. Uh, taking a look at Carmichael. He's playing a 7-1, so he's not playing horrible. In fact, there was Carmichael right there. Oh, and it's over the top. Williams needed to finish that. Was there an, oh, there was an offsides. Okay. Wouldn't have mattered anyway. I hope the injury to McDonald isn't horrible. We go in at the half with a two-goal advantage. We will send them back out with some praise. Ireland's playing a 6-5. Hugel's on a 6-4. They're struggling a little bit. There's Hugel. Oh, good layoff to Ireland. Oh, Bliss goes into Mudge, who... Eh, looks like there was a offsides again. They don't tell us that, but 14 shots, 11 of them on target. Hemmings is getting tired, but I don't particularly have anybody to sub... Oh, well, I, I do have Eden Allard, so let's go ahead and pull, put Allard on for him. 
Uh, anybody else? I've already made one other sub, so I think that's going to be it here. We're going to encourage them now. They didn't respond well to that. Nothing going on highlight wise. I'm going to pull, well, I don't have anybody for Ireland. I don't have anybody for Carmichael. Let's put his Cuierdo on. Get him some minutes. And then I'll go let my dog in after this episode. Because he doesn't sound happy to be outside. Well, that's a good 3-1 win. Pretty uneventful there in the second half. But honestly, Carmichael played pretty well coming on for the injury. So can't really complain there. A good win. Keep him motivated. That's our game in hand. So now we're 19 points clear. And he's out three to four weeks. As long as we don't have... See, this is what I'm running into now as well. I'm having to balance out these vacations. So with McDonald out, do I have anybody kind of ready to come up? He's just not really... Not really there. I'm hopeful he'll be able to start challenging for Ireland uh, here soon. Uh, I could probably use him. <clears throat> but I'm he's 17. I mean, he could fill in on both sides. Not, not really sure I need that right now. Uh, where are we? We are in February. If I call somebody back from loan... Cannot be recalled. So no, we're outside the window. I was thinking uh, either Bryant or uh, Perinello could be in the mix. Um, I'm really hopeful Bryant. Bryant's gotten up to a three-star, so I think he's going to be in the squad uh, as is Perinello next season. We've done pretty good there. Uh, we've got these guys listed for loan, but nobody's picked them up yet. So that's what's going on there. Uh, just taking one more look at the table. There you go. 19 points clear of Forest Green. Uh, we do have 14 matches left to play in the league. So a long way to go. And then uh, FA Trophy quarterfinal against Hartlepool. So unfortunately, Hartlepool was the next match. And I just wanted to get that recording in because it's been a good run. And that's where I wanted to come back was Oxford City and Bath. So instead, I just came right back with Bath and Hartley Pool. So we'll come back for Dorking Highlights uh, and Hartley Pool in the FA Trophy. We'll do that next episode. Guys, hit that like button. Subscribe for daily football manager content. I am back so uh, from vacation. So we'll be back to daily content Monday through Saturday. Thank you so much. And uh, I do appreciate the well wishes on my vacation video. Uh, Somehow or other, that vacation snippet got 17 views and my actual content videos averaged between 5 and 10. So that's, that's weird. Uh, a lot of people came and watched that video that evidently don't watch my channel normally. But uh, hey, I guess I appreciate that too. We'll see you guys. Bye.